Here is today's agenda, what we will go through in presentation. And about us, Havas Europa, ground handling company, is established in 2009 and it's owned by Baltic Aviation System and Havas Ground Handling Company. We are ISAGO certified ground handling provider since June 2011. Um, Havas Europa has experience with utilization of GSE in the airports Riga, Helsinki, and Stockholm. Here is some dates about the handling departure flights in mentioned at airports. Our customers serve using the GSC. Where does quality live? From one side it is a wishes, from other side it's facilities. As you all know, today's conditions in industry are tense and beside of safety aspects, not less role are playing financial aspects. We all are trying to provide product which fulfills the best safety and service practice. However, our competitiveness priority will be the price. The winner in such race will be those who will be able to provide safe service for a best price. Equipment. At the moment we buy only new equipment for, from uh, reputable manufacturers and the equipment just like our employees is the face of the company. In 2012 we utilized 113 motorized and 270 non-motorized units. All equipment average age is two till three years. And here you can see the list of our suppliers. Here's the figures from quality assurance statistic regarding accidents and incidents where uh, ground support equipment were involved in the mentioned stations, uh, percenta percentage per departure flights. Conclusion of such accidents and incidents is financial losses, reputation, occupation health and safety incidents, and sometimes even environment pollution. Analyzing the root cause of the accidents and incidents, we can find out that the main root cause is the human factor. Frequency is even more than 80 persons. Then comes others. As corrective preventive actions done, uh, is the informative campaign, such as memos, posters, briefing, staff presentations. Staff presentations is when uh, employee involved in accident, incident, make a presentation about his mistake, about the procedures uh, which would help avoid his mistake, and he present it to his colleagues. Also, this presentation as case to study are used in our recurrent trainings. And motivation system as well is used as corrective preventive action. So sometimes we are setting the targets, for example, 10 weeks without a GSE damage, and then the staff will get some benefit from management. Also, some up, uh, updates in operations procedures, and the last one, as a more related to today's uh, participants, is a GSC modification. Here are some uh, reference from ISAGO standard regulated GSC functional specification and operations, and we will touch some of them during the presentation. Product quality control and GEC functional specification. GEC uh, procurement is the most important stage in utilizing of GEC, if, especially if we are talking about the purchasing of brand new equipment. It is important to concretize all pre-requests for GEC, as it listed. Um, it is important to concretize uh, airport regulations where GSE is planned to utilize some requirements for GSE operators, driving license, and environment issues. As today, uh, a lot of airports have high ambitions on environment targets as well. 
All identified aspects should be documented. In our case, it is a request of proposal, which is provided to provider for review. After that, when we receiving the GSE, site acceptance should be established, where the pre-requests pre uh, documented in request of proposal are evaluated. GSE maintenance. Proper preventive maintenance program and operations procedure should be issued by GSE providers' manuals. Uh, if the preventive maintenance program is not uh, issued by uh, issued properly maybe uh, by a provider, then we as a ground handling uh, will issue this maintenance program uh, based on our previous experience or some. Oh. Uh, however, it could cause that some specific areas of current equipment are not covered properly. It is important to record all maintenance work and uh, store records properly with the proper uh, tracking system. Example, in case of investigation of some accidents, incidents, warranty issues, statistics, and so on, those records will be required. Training. We as a ground handling provider can issue GSE operations training according to the general safety operations practice. However, we are asking from GSE providers submit us with a proper GSE operations training to ensure that the operator qualification is proper for operations of current unit. The same could be related to the training programs. It is important to record staff qualification and the reason again is the same as for maintenance. Procedures. If the operator operations procedures are not issued from a GEC supplier, then we as a ground handling issuing the procedures uh, based on the general safety principles according to IATA, airport regulations and GEC providers uh, guidelines if there is such one. Operations procedures uh, include pre-operations, operations, and post-operations activities. Procedures are as a guideline uh, for operators where to check unclear issues when the need arises. Pre-operations. GSE pre-movement inspection is described in procedures. However, due to human factors and insufficient following to procedures, operators may forget to disconnect preheating cable, tow bar, and so on. It is a real example from GSE damage statistic. What about if uh, installation of warning system could help avoid such mistakes? Operations. Evaluating equipment must not be driven with the evaluating position except during the final position of the equipment to the aircraft. Again, what if automatics would exclude such driving? We are labeling the passenger stage with the evaluating position marks for the aircraft that we are handling. Maybe the marks could be set according to the ground handler needs on equipment already when equipment is purchased. According to the national regulations, work on equipment in haze over one and five meters is considered as a work in a haze, and it's regulated by occupation health and safety regulations. Collective or individual protective equipment must be used, and uh, staff need to have uh, appropriate qualification to work in a haze. Sometimes it is easier to set equipment so that the haze is not exceeding the haze of uh, 1.49 meters. However, bureaucracy will ask the documents for, from the manufacturer. Post operations. Unserviceable GSE must be targeted as out of service. However, if it is possible to start the equipment and there are no visible indications that GSE is out of order, it is not excluding that the condition, uh, coincidence of circumstances when operator will take it for use. Again, systems that only authorized person, technicians may make equipment serviceable after repairing is completed may exclude such risk. Movement of ground support equipment 
operated in close premixy to the aircraft when the vision of the uh, ground, ground uh, GSE operator is or may be restricted is directed by one or more guide persons. Marshalling of equipment. On the market is available equipment properly equipped that can fulfill the standard without utilization of guide person. Unfortunately, such equipment was not purchased by us. If we are talking about the benefits, it would be one person less utilized in operations, so it is possible easy to make a business case on it. Acceptance of using such equipment, uh, of course, with a proper maintenance program, risk assessment, and so on, was received from our biggest customer and airport authorities. After discussion with our technical department, it was realized that for us, make such installation on existing GSE is too difficult due to several coincidences. GSC must not be positioned at the aircraft type with protective rubber bumpers compressed against the fuselage. Again, probably maybe the automatics could avoid such kind of mistake. Potable water servicing Higgen requirements. Here is listed some, uh, some standards for Higgen requirements from IATA AGM, and I would like to touch some of them. Before the fuel, before the fuel hose uh, is connected uh, to an aircraft, a few liters of waste shall be pumped to the waste. Uh, in a winter time, such leakage may cause ice on apron and on equipment. When the hose are not used, in, uh, all nozzles are, or connectors must be protected. If such thing is not installed uh, in, on a smart way on equipment, it will not work, as you can see on a picture number three. The content of the tank must be drained not later than 24 hours after filling. Actually, the procedure is established and works well, and we are recording all such draining, but however, for example, in Arlanda Airport, according our operations director Arlanda, we were the only ground handler who asked such place, draining place from airport authorities. Airport. The interior of water tank should be sourced once in a month to remove any deposits. What does it mean? Full interior cleaning of water tank means water service unit out of operations at least for three days due to resolution of tank, cleaning of tank, uh, laboratory tests from uh, the tank to make sure that the water is appropriate for use and add together all equipment components. Modification of water service unit and toilet service unit with a steam generator. In the pictures you may see self prepared uh, steam generator, uh, which is made from two components. One is a generator uh, making the currency, another is a steam device. Uh, such steam generator is important uh, and useful component uh, of water and toilet service operations in winter operations in airports where temperature can be lower than minus 20, minus 30. Basically, this is operations where we are working conditions. The cost of such modification were approximately 1,500 euros. Gaps. According to Higgen rules, water service equipment and toilet service equipment must be stored separately, and we cannot use the same steam generator for both services. When steam generator is not in use, it is necessary to find the appropriate place, at least uh, zero degrees or plus, uh, where to store it, to not damage it. If a unit have a preheating in a cabin, then it is okay. And conclusion. Suitability of GSE according to the ISAGO and ground service provider needs. All related standards are established to range the 
safest handling to carrier, and in our hands is how suitable we will establish those conditions to users. Modification of GSC with uh, automatics ex may exclude the human factors. It could be expensive, but in some case it will be cost effective. It is the manner from which side we will look on it. Possibility for modification of GSE in variable operations conditions. Modification always is a tricky question. Sometimes when we have discussion even for insignificant modifications, the question always is how it will affect warranty insurance. Where are the limits of such modification? What we can uh, or what we cannot do or maybe what we can do together with a GSE provider? Thank you for your all attention and hope this opinion will be useful for you somehow. You mean who implement these standards in operations, yeah? Uh, basically, uh, in my responsibilities is described and documented all these standards in our operations manuals and uh, standards uh, we are taking from the CISAGO standards, we are taking from uh, uh, GSE providers manuals, put it together and put it in our operations manuals. So as a guidelines for operators. About the penalties, uh, you mean uh, if, if the procedures are not followed? Yeah, so if you put a standard in place and yeah. uh, people choose to or, or don't follow the standard. Don't follow the standard, yeah. Uh, mostly we are not trying to blame someone or, or uh, uh, punish that the standard is not fully fine. Uh, mostly we are trying uh, to work uh, with this information campaign, uh, explain the needs of such standard. And believe me, uh, after these presentations, uh, that is issued by staff as case to study for other colleagues. I don't think that uh, the involved uh, employee will try to like uh, get back with this mistake. So, just like, was your question more around the broader ISEGO piece? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because ISEGO itself is a is a, is voluntary. Um, so it's an IATA initiative, which is entirely voluntary for um, f for, for GSPs uh, and indeed for airlines if they if they self-handle or indeed if they want to go and handle. Um, the idea being, it follows the IOSA model, which airlines um, become IOSA accredited. If you want to be a member of IATA, you have to have an IOSA accreditation if you're an airline, um, and it tries to follow the same model. I think the challenge it has is it um, it requires if you're a ground handler, to have a head office audit and you have to have each station audited. So that's potentially quite, quite cumbersome. The intent, of course, is that it means that airlines wouldn't come and audit the GSP. And I think the reality is where it is in its evolution, air, airlines are continuing to audit at the same time as GSPs are still having the ISEGO audits. So there's a bit of a transition phase going on. The, because it's voluntary, there is, there is no ISEGO penalty. You, you have findings, you have observations, which you can, choose to, um, you can choose to implement or not. If you, obviously, if you don't, you don't get your ISEGO accreditation. However, it, at this stage, it's entirely voluntary. Documentation is uh, one of the important uh, things uh, related to this standard. And I would say everything documented, then it's implemented and qualification as well is very important uh, from this standard. If you look at back to the IOSA model, it started off looking very much at paperwork um, and now starts looking at how do we as airlines implement it? How, how do we get our flight crew to, to, to comply with the IOSA rules? Um, now clearly, you, again, you get some conflict because IASA may want something different to an, IOSA, uh, an IATA standard. Um, but the intent with ISEGO, going back to ISEGO, the intent with that is that it it stops the proliferation of audits. And that's really, that was really the starting point for it. And to try and get some consistency. Um, so there would be a standard ground handling manual. 
so that all airlines would, if we're going to push back a 747, why should we do it any different to Lufthansa or any different to Air France? The process is the same. Um, and it's fine for us at our home base to have differences because our guys are, are typically only pushing back our own aircraft. But it's the poor guys at the other end, route, when they're seeing it's a blue aircraft, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have this communication with the flight deck. It's a, it's a yellow one. Okay, I've got to change it. Got, and they want something slightly different. And that's where the risk is built in. So ISEGO is, is looking at, at a whole range of things, including how do we get that level of consistency all the way through to, as Christoph says, back through to the documentation. It's starting with the documentation, start getting the base, the, the foundations in place, and then it will build up to, to just checking the, the application of that. Basically... Uh, when it comes uh, to purchase, uh, then as I mentioned, this request of proposal, then all needs are um, asked for, for, for example, from my opinion, uh, operations director of current station, uh, to, to, like to document it and list it in, in this request of proposal and give that uh, to uh, provider for evaluation uh, all, all these needs. So, and discuss this. So don't forget, because sometimes when you will not have a equipment with proper installation, and then, then it would be costly sometimes. Too. Sometimes regarding this functional specification and operation, there is a reference on IATA HRAM. Uh, so basically, these uh, Higgen, re Higgen requirements were taken out from this IATA uh, uh, recommendations. Of course, sometimes we are not following strictly to these requirements for uh, some reasons. So, for example, these three days of out of operations, and if we would follow for this uh, for each month, then it will not be cost effective. Thing. If I may add to that, also, I think there's a piece for me around it's around interpretation because we don't take our equipment out for three days. Um, I was going to say it's madness. Now it's not madness because if that's what your business requires, that's what you obviously have to do. So, and everybody's everybody's business is going to be slightly different. We don't do that. And uh, to your point around the the ISEGO piece and the GSE, there is a there is a forum within IATA, which encourages both manufacturers, airlines, um, aircraft manufacturers, all to come together. Um, I think it is probably, from what I've seen, it's probably one of the groups that struggles the most. Um, it, it doesn't have good airline support. Um, I suspect partly because we are all spread so thin in, in, other, in other activities and good old thing, GSE falls off the end, doesn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not necessarily the nice sexy piece of the business um, and I think it's just, it's just uh, what we see in, in, in lots of areas. Um, but there is, there is a forum um, and I think it's uh, probably a number of people around, around the, the, the auditorium here do attend, um, we don't. Uh, you know, and, and shame on us that, that don't, because there is, a, there is a forum for us to do it. I agree, David. And, and it's you saying the airlines uh, mm. do not participate as much as they could, and if I would ask the manufacturer, I would say the ground handlers, it's the same thing. Mm. Uh, we're, we're discussing things here, but when it comes down to, the, to those working groups who are not part of it. Uh, my perspective on, on, on the point you brought up is, and you touched it already, it's, it's pure making the right business decisions at the end of the day because legislation uh, telling us what product to buy would be pretty bad. You know? uh, proactively, if you see something that you're getting operationally better or economically better and more cost effective, then it's nothing but good business behavior to apply it. And, and is it always easy? No. And for you guys, it's hard because I have that solution and the guy doesn't even listen to me. Yes, it's, it is a niche market, but still pretty hard to keep the overview. And events like this one should help in knowing what's out there. You know, and discussing it and, and, and making it a more transparent world. And, and I remember two years ago, your colleague when he was up here and was talking about how you started the business. You know, getting onto the internet and looking for equipment and couldn't really find it. Yes, this is really then uh, where the learning curve uh, hits in. So you came a long way from, from <laughs> what we had there.